Hello. How are you today? I pray that you are well. The scripture for today is from Hebrews chapter 9. I ask a question. Where is a holy place for you? What is a holy place? I remember when I was a child, I thought about the church as a holy place. And in fact, I used to think when I was really little that, that God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit were in that building and that they were in that building when I left. And that when I went in the building, even if I was the only person in the building, that they were in there. Like I had my house, they had their house. They called it God's house. But it's different than that, we know, theologically. It says now the first covenant had regulations and worship and also an earthly sanctuary. A tabernacle was set up. In its first room were the lampstand and the table with its consecrated blood and this bread, and this was called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a room called the Most Holy Place, which had the golden altar of incense and the gold-colored Ark of the Covenant. And this Ark contained the gold jar of manna, Aaron's staff that had budded, and the stone tablets of the Covenant. Above the Ark were the cherubim of the glory, overshadowing the atonement cover. But we cannot discuss these things in detail now. When everything had been arranged like this, the priests entered the regularly into the outer room to carry on their ministry. But only the high priest entered the inner room, and that only once a year, and never without blood, which he offered for himself and for the sins of the people had committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit was showing by this the way into the most holy place had not yet been disclosed, as long as the first tabernacle was still functioning. This is an illustration for the present time, indicating that the gifts and sacrifices being offered were not able to clear the conscience of the worshiper. They are only a matter of food and drink and various ceremonial washings and external regulations applying until the time of the new order. You see that scripture? How's your conscience? It says this statement, they were not able to clear the conscience of the worshiper. Is your conscience clear? Is your conscience cleansed? Is your conscience at peace? The only way our conscience can be at peace is when Jesus comes and cleanses it. Because it says in verse 11, But when Christ came as the priest of the good things that are now already here, he went through a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with human hands, that is to say, not part of this creation. He did not enter by the means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood thus obtaining eternal redemption. It is in the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that you and I have the forgiveness of sins. That's how we have a clear conscience. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are so many unclean, them so they are outwardly clean. How much more, then, will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death, and so we may serve the living God. In other words, our consciences are cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. I pray that your conscience is clean. I'm not saying that you and I are innocent. I'm not saying you and I are not guilty. I'm saying that we are cleansed because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Our conscience is clean. The alarm no longer needs to go off in our heads because once for all, the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray, where is a holy place for you? Truth is, the scripture says that, that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit because of Christ. The holy place is not a building as if God is contained therein, but that he lives by the mystical union in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. For I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, Galatians 2.20. And the life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Your conscience is clean because of the blood shed by Christ. Please pray with me. Lord God, I pray your grace to be upon all who hear my words. May their consciences be clean. May they, may they be at peace. May they know your truth. 
that once for all time and once for all people, the blood of Jesus Christ was shed. And therefore, a holy place is the fact that we have been made clean in the blood. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today.